Welcome to our second State of the District event here today. Bienvenido a todos que vinieron a nuestro evento hoy. Gracias. It is inspiring to be in a district where we have the arts. We are so fortunate in this district to have such visionary leadership and a board that also supports the arts and values the power of the arts to propel our students to be great critical thinking students and to be the next leaders of our community. This year, L System is in their third year and we've actually um, expanded to Duncan Holbert. Y arriba, when you hear arriba, we do like this. And then abajo, we go like this. Good morning. It's so thrilling to be here with you today and uh, to celebrate the good work that's happening here in the Pajaro Valley School District. Well, UC Santa Cruz, uh, since its earliest days, ha was founded on the principles of social justice and social equity. And so we are grounded, all of us, in the belief that all students, regardless of their background, must have the same access to high quality education. Our student body looks much different than it did 50 years ago at our founding. The majority of our students are now from historically underrepresented groups in higher education. Roughly 40% of our students are first in their families to attend college. And I want to double down on that commitment. We must better serve first generation low income students. I'm first generation student myself, and we know that our students have such huge potential, but we have to provide the support structures to help them from the get-go. Together, we have the opportunity to make an incredible difference in this community. Half of the Pajaro Valley is under the age of 21. Think about that huge potential, that huge human capital and what education can do to transform this region. Study after study has shown that a strong foundation in education drives both individual and community success. So together, in partnership, among all the regional universities, colleges, school districts, and preschool, uh, we have the opportunity to have huge impact. And I look forward to helping us work together to grow our already existing programs and have even greater impact on the future of our students. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The arts open so many doors to other places. And so I want you to know that today you're here, tomorrow we'll be get, getting your autographs. United Way of Santa Cruz County opened its doors in 1941, right here in Pajaro Valley, if you're ever on Jeopardy, okay? <laughs> And for nearly 80 years, we continue to stand here and work side by side. Together, PVUSD and United Way meets families where they are. We meet our children and families where they are to support them with resources and services throughout their journey, from cradle to career to lifelong learning. PVUSD sets the tone and sets the stage when it comes to whole child approach. They implement culturally responsive best practices that speaks to the dignity, integrity, and compassion of our families. This affirms their belief that all students can achieve it if they believe it. Dr. Rodriguez, and to the dynamic PBUSD Dream Team, thank you for your commitment to youth well-being. Thank you for showing up every day ready to prepare the next generation of movers and shakers, dreamers and makers. Let's continue to roll up our sleeves and do the work that is required of us to ensure that every child has the ability to believe that they can achieve. Thank you. And now for the main event, I would like to introduce our wonderful 
leader, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez, for the report on the state of the district. Welcome. Welcome to everybody. It's so great to see you all here. We've said it before, but this really is unique to the Watsonville and to Pajaro Valley in general, is the fact that we have so many partners, so many people who every day support our students. So when you looked at this at the beginning, we talk about educational equity, and we really believe that we're not just serving the child. We're not even just serving the parents, but we're actually also serving the community as a whole because they provide the base in which our students have their first experiences. I think something that's been unique the last two years is really kind of shifting the focus from just academics to really looking at the whole child approach looking at not only are our students receiving rigorous instruction, but are they also in a kind, caring environment that supports them at their point of need. So some students, they come to school purely for the athletics. My son was one of them. Some students come purely for our robotics and MESA programs. Some students come to our schools just for our visual and performing arts. What we want to do is figure out what inspires them, what motivates them to want to come to school, to want to be part of our community and provide that to them. All of our community partners that are here today, what I appreciate about them is their willingness to look at, one, what do they do best? And then two, what do we all want for our children? And it amazingly is all the exact same thing. Now, so I'm a data gal, so you saw El Sistema and you saw the students that were really motivated. I thought it was wonderful. I just wanted to make a note on the, the video that you saw. So those are our students at Duncan Holbert, Holbert um, Preschool. So they are not only our youngest children, but they're our most fragile children. So those students um, are all special needs students for the most part. And that was the very first class that they ever had of El Sistema this past week because we just implemented that this year. At the end, they're singing, doing hand movements, using instruments, all within 30 minutes. Also, is there residual effect? Is there effect not only on their reading and math? And the answer is yes. So when you look at the charts up here, you'll see how the students that are in, in El Sistema are in either blue or dark blue. And you'll see the difference between those students and the very same students from the very same school that are not in the program. This was one year in the program. So just in one year in the program, it made exponential growth for them. And it continues. Look in third grade, on the second year of the program, they had, this is now the second year that they've been in it, look how much more progress they made. We were really big on outside validation. So we actually had Stanford um, look at, and they said we wanted them to look at, not the academics, like I was mentioning, because of the focus on the whole child, but we wanted them to look at leadership, engagement, motivation, and look at what our students said in terms of engagement. So when they go to their school, they now say, I don't just go here, I belong here, right? I belong in this school. We want inside the schools to be that safe haven that provides them that consistency and stability and care and joy. All these programs that you see are student-centered programs where we're really looking at where is the student right now in this very moment and how can we move them forward. So SIPS is a mastery-based literacy program. If I'm a high flyer and accelerated, I get accelerated curriculum. If I need additional support, then I'm provided it. So we went from just 31 teachers to 102 teachers. We now are at, this year, every single elementary teacher K-3. Two years ago, we just touched 710 children. This past year, 2,467 students. And this year, we are touching over 4,000 students with the program. We saw in one year, just one, 
a 41% increase in literacy. 41% increase. So we went from 48% to 89% of our first graders are readers. We are able to pilot Map Accelerator. This is important because this is a partnership with Khan Academy, which is only open to five school districts in the entire nation. And it's really built on the fact that each child needs what they need in the point of the moment. And so you'll see it's gamified. That's why most kids like um, Khan Academy because there is a gamification of it. And the wonderful thing is, it's only 45 to 60 minutes a week. They don't have to be on there for hours in a day. 45 to 60 minutes in one week is all that we need in order to help accelerate their learning even more. So when you look at it and you say, okay, they've been doing all these things, they've been doing all these programs, is it working on the state level assessment? The answer is yes. Right? For the second year, we've seen growth, and you can see the tremendous growth that we're making in both literacy and mathematics. And then on measures of academic progress, which we call MAP, um, the most important thing is that students are making at least one year's growth, and in many times, two years growth. Because we got to get them. If they are behind, we can't just do one year's growth. We have to do, we have to accelerate that and make even more growth. And so as promised, um, I am going to show a quick video, a very quick clip. Um, and then I am going to ask um, Eddie to come on up to speak to um, the Youth um, Cinema Project. And his whole team really provides um, a basis of showing people what is possible. Showing our students that anything that they put their mind to, they can actually achieve. This is our students at Cesar Chavez Middle School where um, they um, have the program. Camera. See, five, take, five, mark. Settle. Action. Qué gusto estar aquí con todos ustedes. No saben el, el gran honor que es estar aquí en Pájaro Valley. Te lo digo ahorita. For those of you that are Spanish impaired, do not worry. This group is bilingual. We are what the future really looks like. Okay? You are one of the most fortunate school districts in America. You should know that and you should feel that. And I thank uh, Dr. Rodriguez more than anything for understanding her position and her ability to produce this kind of understanding for your community. Congratulations. <laughs> Very quickly, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Every single person that's in this room right now, from the students to the parents, to the press, all of you have advanced the understanding of our children and our advancement as a, uh, as a community and as a humanity. That's all I came to say. Our program, the Youth Cinema Project, is extraordinary. Uh, Stanford <laughs> assessment placed us in a position that they've never seen before. So we have produced this over since 1998. It's taken us many, many, many decades now to get it to the point of where it is today. When Dr. Rodriguez asked us to come into this program here, she helped us start it back in Santa Ana. And she brought it with her when she came here. And you guys are really fortunate to have her. We need more Rodriguez's out there like her. <laughs> and, uh, to, and, and I mean, there's people all over this country that are trying to do what we're doing. She's been able to accomplish it and she's pushing it forward. I'll tell you right now, the Youth Cinema Project is here for you. Learn about it understand it and know that it is in your school systems. Right now in Santa Ana, our children in Santa Ana have the program. They start in the fourth grade. They have it in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, all the way through 11th grade. And now Chapman University is giving them scholarships for free access to their school system to the students of the Youth Cinema Project. That pathway, that pathway can be accomplished here so that we have, you know, 
Santa Cruz, uh, you know, UC Santa Cruz giving us scholarships. And um, we have, we have, we'll have uh, San Jose State giving us scholarships. We'll have Stanford giving us scholarships. Because they will look at the program, the program is so overwhelming. I can't tell you, I wish I had had it. I feel sad that our children don't have, all of our children don't have it. The biggest complaint we've ever had from people who understand this program is why wasn't my child in that program? Because the self-esteem, self-respect, self-worth that a child receives, not out of making the movie, we're not trying to make filmmakers, we're trying to make lifelong learners. There's a big difference. You use the construct of the art form, like them learning how to discipline themselves to play an instrument, they use that discipline to do everything else they do. That's the whole idea of the arts. All I can say to all of you from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much a thousand times over for your commitment to our children, our community, and the advancement of us as a human species. You are really making us all understand that there is only one race, and that's the human race. God bless you, thank you. Now we're going to Freedom Elementary. We're streaming into a classroom, and here we go. Orale pues, aquí estamos en el classroom, yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Miranda and I'm here at Freedom Elementary, right outside from the Miller's classroom. And right now she has them working on problem solving and problem solving and collaboration and creating skills. And we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to start with our problem solving and collaboration skills. Okay, so we're going to start with our we stream into a classroom each and every year because we want to be reminded of why we're here. I want the community to see the difference of what we are now doing. So I want you to actually be able to see it because learning is no longer sitting in a chair listening to someone tell you what you need to think and do and taking notes, but it's about being resilient, a problem solver, being able to work through frustration and have the joy when you actually succeed. We do have the first computer science immersion school in the county, so Valencia Elementary. Um, they have from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade, they have their students doing, they call them epic build. So what it is, is they do a unit of study and it results in an epic build. The first one is Scratch. So they actually build their own using coding, the coding software Scratch, they build their own video game. So they also do Lego Robotics, which is one of the kids' favorites, and they do Minecraft as well. We are just starting um, in January, we're starting our second um, computer science immersion school because I really believe in equity of program. So we are going to be starting it down here in the South Zone at Ohlone Elementary um, starting in January. So Ohlone Elementary will also have that. We use Project Lead the Way, um, and that is a pathway that starts in sixth grade and goes all the way up to the high school. Um, it is supported by a, um, a grant, which we receive through um, the federal government, which infuses millions of dollars into our district so that we can collaborate with Digital Nest and um, Cabrillo College. So thank you for doing that um, and collaborating with us on that. So our students, our students in their junior and senior year are receiving college credit um, during their high school time as in computer science. So they are getting a leg up already on the competition and ETR is working with us to evaluate that program because we need to make sure that what we're doing is effective and efficient. So all this work has allowed us um, to be named in the League of Innovative Schools. So knowing that there are thousands of school districts, um, that's really wonderful. So if you're looking at the state of the district, you will see a whole section on our budget. And I wanted to focus the last bit of time on that piece because you'll hear me talking um, significantly about efficiencies, right? Efficiency is how are we doing? How well are we doing things? How can we do it better? Because when you think of when you think of budget, there's really only um, a couple of ways 
to help create more funding for your own self. One is through grant writing, and we have probably the best grant writer in the nation. So Andrea Carlos Willie. So getting money, more money in, or looking at are we using the money well, right? So are we using it the most efficiently, and are we using it the most effectively? So really looking at those two constructs, we're really focusing on three mindsets. So I'm really big on trying to figure out how the system as a whole, how can we do a better job? So we need to be look forward. So I talked a lot about the long game, the end game, right? We're not here for short successes, we're here for long successes that last our community for um, decades to come. We want to make sure that we're having conversations and we're reaching outward, that we're not just looking within and then looking at the mindset of how well are we doing something. Um, but what we know is it's the people that touch the children every single day that make the difference, right? I see children every day, but I don't see the same children every day, right? And so people who see the same children every day, they have, whether they're a bus driver, a food service worker, a teacher, those are the people who make the impact. The ones that come in and the children know, I get to see Maria Rodriguez, the food service worker from Amasi Elementary. I get to see her every day and she is my constant, right? And so we want to make sure that we are impacting our students through in, in investing in our staff. So when you look at our, when you look at our budget, 85% of our budget is towards um, staff compensation. And that's every single person in the, in the group, right? 85% of all of what we, we receive, we put into staff and compensation. Then you'll see 8% is services and other operating expenses. So that's trash, lights, electricity, you know, all the things that we're, I'm glad that we do have back, by the way. 5% um, <laughs> is books and supplies, right? We have to have, the children have to have their books and supplies. And then two is capital and costs. So that's facilities, right? Improving our facilities. Then when you look at that 85%, you think, okay, so where does it go? Where does it go? So 60%, almost 61% goes to certificated staff. Right, so that's anyone who has a credential of, of some type, pretty much. So that's teachers, counselors, social emotional counselors, um, all that. Then 28.7%, so almost 29% goes to classified staff. So that is our large bus fleet, our food service workers, custodial office managers, all the people who are also supporting the infrastructure. So we often say about um, our classified staff that they are the ones to know on the site, right? So when you go to a site, who's the backbone? It's the office manager and the custodian, right? Yes. But then for us, because of all the systems we have, our backbone also includes our 100 bus drivers, our, all of the food service workers that we have. So when you look at the other, 5.9% of that pie is for site certificated management. Because we know that we need to have good leaders at our sites and have the support. And then 2.4 is classified management, and then 2.2 is district certificated management. So about 2% is, um, is district level management. I wanted the community to know we care about giving kids the services that they need. So we have great wraparound services. We do need to continue to look at are we using them efficiently and effectively. But I wanted everyone to know we have 259 instructional assistants throughout our district. Right? So in the classrooms, helping students every day, we have 259. Top, on top of that, and these are all non-management support staff, on top of that, we have 76 um, um, support services that is aligned with SELPA. So that's our special education or exceptional students. 
Um, and behavior text, so behavior text, we have 74 and on and on. But I wanted you to know that we do know that we need to invest in our students. And we know that the people who do it are the people that both figuratively and literally touch children every day. And so we're dedicated to do that. So we know that we're never satisfied, right? We're never satisfied doing great work. We should celebrate it, but we're never satisfied. We got a lot more to do. So this year, as a joint effort, we are working on all in every day. So, con ganas todos los días. We will continue to do the good work for kids, and we will do that good work with your support. So thank you very much. Bravo. Repeat after me. All in. All in. Every day. Every day. What a wonderful commitment uh, that uh, Dr. Rodriguez and this community has shown to our students. Before I get started, I do have to say I'm a little starstruck uh, with Edward James almost here. I had, to, I had to get this out, Mr. Olmos, I'm sorry. I'm a huge fan and um, you know, with iconic uh, characters that he's played, uh, like Gaff in Blade Runner and El Pachuco in Zoot Suit, um, but maybe it was Jaime Escalante who's had the biggest impact on us, who's inspired so many educators in this room. Um, and your work as an activist and now sharing your, your gift with, with our, the students of the Pajaro Valley. What I see is a school district and a community investing in our youth. When we talk about transforming that learning environment so that it reflects the greatness that our children bring and the families that they come from, because that's how I see it. We have so much strength, so much richness, so much diversity. Las familias lo que traen aquí es una riqueza cultural asombrante. And I, what I see is an investment to make our classrooms reflect that greatness. Students are making these connections both internally and externally. They're able to see and understand the power, the trajectory that they have. It's opening doors. It's creating possibilities for these students that they, haven't, they maybe didn't contemplate. Preparing them for jobs that don't yet exist. And I am so, so proud of the work that Dr. Rodriguez is doing and the school board, um, the leadership that we have and, the, and the, the involvement of this community in making this happen. Work on early literacy, focus on the arts, science, coding. All of these pieces, working in partnership and collaboration with a huge network of community organizations, the County Office of Education, and so many other agencies and community members to make it happen. But I, I really agree with what Dr. Rodriguez said, which is it really is about the people that are in the classroom every day um, serving our students. Those are, the student, those are the people that are creating those spaces, that, those environments that are making this happen. So I'd like to shout out to our, our teachers, to our classified staff that serve our students every day and transforming that educational experience for our children. Let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Everything that we see puts students at its center. College and career readiness, equity. This is what this organization is about. This is what PVUSD is about. This is what Dr. Rodriguez is about. And I think that's what all of us who are in this room are about. And so, you know, I often think about the word trust because we use it a lot in education. Trust, we call our, our, our board members trustees. We think about our families entrusting their children to us. We are, uh, we are, people who are responsible, who have that huge responsibility to take that trust and, and deliver on a promise to our children. And when I think about myself as a parent, my children being at the, at the, in the PBUSD schools, the Watsonville Charter School of the Arts, and my excitement seeing what's going on that my son is going to be going to Watsonville High School next year, I think about how I'm trusting Dr. Rodriguez, this school board, these teachers, classified staff, and this community for the success of my child. So thank you for your commitment. Thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing this momentum. Y adelante. Thank you so much. Buenos dias. Good morning. Ay, Maestro Escalante. Um, I, my parents don't know your real name. They call you, I saw Mr. Escalante on TV. That's, that, frame, that tells you my framing growing up, right? Como dijo Mr. Escalante, mija. Si, si se puede, tu puedes. Thank you for being here. 
esteemed Board of Trustees, uh, comunidad, it's a pleasure uh, to be up here and to con really just join the celebration, the celebration of this focused commitment for the future that will be and is in Watsonville, right? All these beautiful children that are here, the children that are in their um, classroom studying today. And as a proud uh, product of PVUSD, go Wildcats. Uh, it was great to be welcomed this morning uh, by the cheerleaders. Um, I have to say that as I was listening to, to you, Michelle, uh, mention all of the supports that you're providing, right, for the whole child, I was reminiscing how, how was it that this girl who grew up on Palm Street in downtown Watsonville ended up in Berkeley? I wasn't privileged to have all the wonderful programs that all of you have, right? But there was a community that was supporting me. And Father Rojas, who ran the Penny Club, right, used to pick me up in a bus and take me to the Penny Club so that I can play the melodica, right? in the marimba. And that proves what has been stated this morning, that the connection between the arts and success is completely interrelated. And I'm a product of that. And I'm proud to say that I'm 100% behind what the PUSD board and, and the leadership is doing. At PVPSA, we recognize that every child, like every adult, goes through difficult moments in life. And that in those moments in life, we need to offer a helping hand. And so we do that in our agency by having trained therapists that are able to hold the hands of those children and the families to go through those challenging times. And we pride ourselves with the work that we do. But we also recognize that there is an interdependence and an interrelationship between that experience that the child and the family is going through and the neighborhood and the community they call home. And so at PVPSA, we're very intentional and in not just working at the individual level, but working in the outer layers that embrace that child and that family. So in the Pajaro Valley, like across the state of California and across the nation, we've all been witnessing what's been going on with the vaping issue. So students this week, students from Pajaro Valley High, many middle schools, Watsonville High School, they joined our team at PVPSA at the Tuesday City Council meeting to ask the City Council to help them have a chance at being successful in their life. They shared their stories about what they're seeing in their communities, in their neighborhoods. They were very descriptive about what is going on. And they asked the City Council, please join us. Please help us protect our siblings. Please help us protect our families. Please ban these products from our community. Please ban the production of e-cigarettes or sale of e-cigarettes in our community. And with a very courageous attitude, the city council unanimously approved that request. Bravo. So we too are committed to engaging the youth and the children and the families of this community to support their well-being, and we do it from a very intentional place of also giving them the ability to discover their own power, because they have it, and they demonstrated that this week. So thank you all for your support, y uh, con ganas todos los días. Buenos días, good morning. <laughs> Just like a, a few of you, I'm sort of uh, kicking out with uh, Mr. Edward James Olmos here. And, um, for a kid that was a wannabe cholo in the 90s, you know, I, I base my character a lot on your work, so, so thank you. <laughs> um, but thank you, Alicia. Uh, my name is Francisco Estrada. You can all call me Paco. And uh, I have the honor uh, to serve the good people of Watsonville, of my hometown, as their mayor y su servidor. I am incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to address all of you here today at the State of the District. And the reason I'm grateful is because um, there's something that I've been wanting to say to the school district for a really, really long time. And I, you know, I have a captured audience finally, you know? <laughs> and um, that's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to every teacher, every counselor, every support staff, every administrator, every union member, every volunteer, 
every after school program, every board member, every superintendent. Big shout out to Migrant Education. Thank you. Thank you because you make a difference. And I want to thank all those who shaped who I am today as well. And so this might sound like a, an, ex, uh, an Oscar acceptance speech, but bear with me, okay? <laughs> but thank you to La Maestra Ruby Vasquez, Ms. Gloria Del Campo, Ron Wingard, Peggy the Librarian, Ms. Colleen Silva, Mr. Sandoval, Lori Godin, Mr. Jack Jones, Ms. Ms. Whitmore, Ms. Mutafian, Rosa Hernandez, Maggie Gonzalez, my tutor, Ferris Sabah. <laughs> Coach Suniga, Coach Hedgepeth, Mr. Lovato, Mr. Castaneda, Mr. Orejel, all of you, thank you. Thank you for telling me that I always matter. Thank you for encouraging me and giving me the strength to follow my dreams. Thank you for teaching me that I am worthy of love, respect, and dignity. And if I leave this world and I make it a better place, it'll be because of all of you. I'm a product of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. I am what happens when academic institutions put the welfare and well-being of each student at the center of every one of your processes. And this is what Dr. Rodriguez and the current generation of district and school employees are doing for our students today. Thank you to the district, to community members, including Mr. Edward James Olmos, for bringing the arts and music programs back to our schools. Thank you to our teachers who are preparing our youth for the great challenges of the 21st century, including the ones that are already here like climate change. Thank you to Carlos and Linda and the entire team at the Food Services Department for providing our students with healthy produce, snacks, and meals. Thank you to the board for having the courage to once again invest in our facilities, in progressive pr uh, programming, and in the future of this community. And thank you again, Dr. Rodriguez, for your willingness to work in partnership with the city of Watsonville. This amazing partnership has already resulted in two amazing gifts for our community, Mexico en el Corazón and the last Music at, uh, music at the Park, which were amazing events. And you, if, you know, if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. I want to thank all the parents out there that work from sun up to sundown to provide a better life for their kids, especially my parents that always pushed my siblings and I to excel in school, to graduate from college, and to give back to our community. My parents have always had this dogma, this belief that they have instilled in me, to, and I, I believe in it to this day, but public education is and should always be the great equalizer in this country. And because, and because of this, we must always do our part to support the Pajaro Valley Unified School District and make sure each student has an opportunity to reach their full potential. And I'm living proof of what can happen if you give a kid in this community a shot. So once again, thank you all for everything you do. Adelante y con ganas todos los días. Thank you.